Since 2017, we've committed to more than a billion dollars to address the overdose crisis, and we're taking concrete steps to divert people who use drugs away from the criminal justice system. I have volunteered in some drop-in centers and seen the opioid crisis uh, with my own eyes, so I think that's scary and that shouldn't be um, in open access to kids. Canadian Minister of Mental Health and Addictions Yara Sachs has doubled down on her support in distributing fentanyl for children under the age of 18. The Canada.ca website says very clearly a few grains can kill you. Is that appropriate? <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, my colleague did table ask this question before, and I believe we've already tabled all the proofs on safer supply, and I'll be happy to table them again for further reference. It's not the question, Minister. My question is, is, do you think you should be giving an incredibly potent synthetic opioid, of which a few grains can kill you, to children? Yes or no? Simple. Each physician works with their patient on the treatment protocols that work best for them. This controversial stance has sparked intense reaction from the public as well as with the opposition party. Canada's Conservative Party released a public statement condemning the Trudeau government for refusing to end the prescription of these drugs to minors, mentioning that drugs have ruined the lives of countless people and further stating that Canada's opioid crisis has worsened after the eight years of this government. And I'll quote uh, Giuseppe Ganchi, the, the head of Last Door Recovery, 100% of all the people I've met who are on safer supply sell their supply. I've never met anybody who's taken all of it. Why do they sell it? Because while it's powerful enough to get a high to begin with, it loses its strength with use, and so it gets sold to kids, and the profits are then used for fentanyl. And then those kids buy the fentanyl when the hydromorphine is not. I'm sorry. In fact, a new study has found that Canada is the world's second most drug-addicted country. What we've done around harm reduction and safe, uh, safe consumption, um, the the project that we have, that working with BC to decriminalize uh, possession of harder drugs now. Um, as we, I mean, there was a lot of shouting about that, and it's a very politically polarizing issue still. I and mean, you can see the conservative leader doing videos about how, how bad that is, but grounding ourselves in facts and data. Some argue that introducing such a potent opioid to the younger demographic could make these statistics even higher, leading to severe health risks and also long-term consequences. This policy um, and in its intent uh, is an important part of the spectrum of medical care that we are providing and that we need to continue to provide for people who use drugs in this province. Today, we're hitting the streets of Calgary to see what the Canadians think about the government's proposal to make fentanyl available for children. How do you feel about BC's plan to be distributing fentanyl through safe supply to minors, uh, especially since it's been supported by the federal government? Um, actually, there are some uses to fentanyl. They can help with seizures and other stuff like that. Um, in proper dosages, it actually does make sense as well as could be the same thing that happened with the weed is um, more regulation could actually push people towards doing it in a safe manner as opposed to a unhealthy overdose. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. I'm not sure it would be great for Alberta. Um, I have worked in like volunteered in some drop in centers and seen the opioid crisis uh, with my own eyes. So I think that's scary and that shouldn't be um, in open access to kids. However, I do believe that for some medical reasons, it could be, but it could be done through parental consent probably. Not, definitely not for my generation who are not quite um, used to dealing with such things. It shouldn't be in open access probably. That's probably the worst thing that could ever happen, especially with the fentanyl crisis going on right now with everybody overdosing and so many people are dying as a result of it. So that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. Not too sure about it going to minors. Those are good points though, but I think it going to minors would probably do more harm than good depending on it. Because if it's a really addictive thing, then I'm not sure how that would work out for you know kids and all that. I'm a bit worried for them, to be honest. Comparing BC to Alberta, Daniel Smith is hoping to open a bunch more treatment centers and also help families force those with drug addictions into treatment facilities. How do you feel about that? Well, it's much they needed because there's already so many people here suffering with addictions. So, I mean, whatever, a little bit more resources to help should help, right?
I believe forced um, it would be a bad bad way of doing that um, because ultimately you have to look at the person's individual treatments um, and it is since it is still like an experimental drug and very harmful um, it should be done by consent and not by parent consent we we saw with a lot of uh, the whole transgender thing that if it becomes forced it becomes a huge issue that kids don't always know what they're getting into. More beds would be definitely great because seeing how many people are just on the streets after having an addiction and just being um, left out with no help, I think that is uh, great for them. Being forced into treatment, I don't know how liberal that is, um, but it's definitely good to have more opportunities to do that. Definitely good to have uh, more uh, financing for this. That would be great. Yeah, I think that's an important issue. I think that's the best because the more help, the better to get everybody healthy and safe and away from that. That's the best. It's so insane, I think. So because it's so curious, Lola. <laughs> they need to think about it more, about child, about uh, future generation. Any other comments on the drug crisis in Alberta? Uh, I mean, you don't need my opinion. I mean, if you go around the city, you see it enough, so. I think more drugs should be regulated um, because, yes, the more that it's pharmaceutical, um, yes, there will be your grandpa who gives out their meds that doesn't want it, but at least it'll be regulated for the most part. And there's a lot of harm and structure around drugs that should be as opposed to if it's let loose. You can't deny that they exist. We've watched the destabilization of the Canadian people over the years under poor leadership in this country. Giving dangerous and highly addictive drugs to minors may be one of the worst plans of the Trudeau NDP government. If you stand against this, visit TrudeauMustResign.com and sign the petition.